The Costa del Sol, the name of the southern Mediterranean coast of Spain. In former times, a variety of bumpy roads connected this region's sandy bays and remote fishing villages. But today, modern roads cater for mass tourism. Almunacar is the main tourist center of this section of the coast. Once a tranquil fishing village, it's now a busy coastal resort. The wide road separates clean, extensive beaches from huge apartment blocks that were constructed during an amazing transformation of the coastline. But there are still fishermen who set out each day for their catch, painstakingly mend their nets and give their boats a new lick of paint. Once the Phoenicians and Romans settled on this part of the coast, long before the arrival of the Moors. Here, tourism has developed into a major industry, and the inferior construction methods of the earlier resorts have now been improved by the country's architects. The road winds along the steep coast and travels past Maro. This is a sleepy farming village surrounded by terrace-like fields. Few tourists venture into this agricultural area. The main attraction of this tranquil farming village is a large Roman aqueduct that spans across a deep abyss in the rocky coastline. is a popular bathing resort on the eastern Costa del Sol. It has developed due to tourism and during the summer months it's packed with holidaymakers. It's a village with a population of 13,000 and is particularly favored by the English. Each promenade is extremely attractive. With the striking scenery of the Sierra de Tequeda as a backdrop, Nerca is the most beautiful village on this part of the coast. The center of the village is dominated by discotheques, restaurants, boutiques and souvenir shops, but its romantic bays provide a good escape from all the hustle and bustle of the lively village. The Balcón de Europa is a popular square, meeting place and terrace that is located on a cliff that rises above the sea. Azure blue sea and rocky bays. The perfect spot for those with a romantic disposition.
horse-drawn carriages wait patiently for paying passengers, and in some of the alleys of the old town, there is still the age-old charm of the ancient Arabic Narija. The half-moon-shaped rocky coastline is situated in front of a beautiful mountain range. This region has a special charm. A short excursion into the nearby coastal mountains leads to the picturesque village of Frigiliana that nestles on the slopes of the Sierra de Tejeda. This village community remains undisturbed by outside influences and the hard-working people of this region work in agriculture. district with its white houses adorned with flowers has narrow stepped alleys for which donkeys provide transport. A village with a long history. Mountain villages of today are now more akin to the Costa del Sol than with this country's interior. But it hasn't always been like that. A good alternative to the beach life of the coast, Andalusian atmosphere in the mountains. Returning to the rocky Costa del Sol, it's good to take in the beautiful, untouched landscape before the road winds its way up the coast. Toroch is another Andalusian mountain village that has so far managed to remain off the tourist trail. Here, village life continues as it always has done. The view across the Blue Sea is quite captivating. The air is cleaner here than on the coast and the local people are happy and content. Wine growing has always enjoyed a long and honorable tradition in this region, and the same is true today. In Algarobo, the final white village near to the coast, time seems to have stood still a place for dreams and contemplation. Andalusia is different. And it's more than just a land of sun and eternal blue skies. Not only a land of flamenco and bullfights, beaches and ancient traditions. The Pueblos Blancos, or white villages, derived their name from the striking whitewashed facades of their houses. At the top, there's a magnificent view and a garden full of flowers. Thank you. 
The journey continues in a southerly direction along the Andalusian Costa del Sol, a land of dreams that lies between Europe and Africa. Since Phoenician times, the earlier Malacca was a busy trading port that was defended by the Castillo de Gibralforo that is located on the summit of a mountain. The large bay with its protective mountain range in the north enjoys a mild climate throughout the entire year. It provides a fine perspective of the monumental dimensions of the bullfight arena. Mighty walls with large fortified towers wind up the mountain and connects the city fortress with the Castillo. The Phoenicians built a lighthouse here. The cathedral, also known as La Manquita, symbolizes a Catholic victory on the former site of a mosque. It took more than 250 years to construct this colossal Renaissance building. In 1783, further construction was halted due to a lack of funds. In the interior of the cathedral, its huge dimensions become more apparent. The ornate choir stall and carved statues of various saints were created by Pedro de la Mina. The cathedral is 115 meters long and 52 meters high. It's squeezed in between the narrow alleys of the old town and the surrounding buildings. On the edge of the city center is the Moorish fortress of Al Kazaba, that was once a fortified residence on the hills of Castillo. Directly beneath the walls of Alcazaba is the 2,500-year-old Teatro Romano, a remnant of Roman times. Both fortifications are evidence of the wonderful era of the Moors that made Malaga the center of a small kingdom. After Roman occupation, there followed a Byzantine and then a West Gothic period until, in 1711, the Moors arrived, when, under the Nasiridis, they built the main harbour of the Kingdom of Granada. The second largest city in Andalusia also became famous as being the birthplace of its most famous son, world-famous artist Pablo Ruiz Picasso. Today, Malaga is a modern city, a center of tourism on the Costa del Sol, and with the customary sandy beach directly outside the front door. Around 10 kilometers south of Malaga is the modern coastal resort of Torremolinos, since the 1950s a center of mass tourism. 
The city developed at a wild pace and soon had all the attributes of a modern holiday resort. With innumerable huge skyscrapers, bars and restaurants, and also endless sandy beaches and exciting entertainment facilities. A wide road connects the many tourist resorts along this part of the coast. In the hilly inland area of the Costa del Sol is the pretty white mountain village of Mijas, a popular visiting place for those holidaying on the coast. A small hilltop bullfight arena shines bright white along with the houses of the surrounding area. Bullfighting has a long tradition in Andalusia, but the bloody spectacle is the subject of much controversy. Each year, more than 30,000 bulls are slaughtered. A journey by horse-drawn carriage is very popular. Pure Andalusian romance al fresco, with a wonderful view across the small village and nearby sea. It's no wonder that this splendid traditional mountain village is so popular. Steep alleys lead past houses whose facades are covered with flowers. Also, the donkey or burro taxi is in great demand with sightseers. Finally, everyone visits the small hill at the entrance to the village on which there's a statue of the Holy Virgin Mary, as well as a fine view. Mabea, the prima donna of the Costa del Sol. A marvelous rendezvous for both the stars of stage and screen, and a leisure resort for the international jet set. The yachting harbor of Puerto Banus is the true symbol of Mabea. The quay has a colourful variety of bars, cafes, restaurants and exquisite shops. Luxurious boats are where the rich and famous entertain their guests. Pleasure is the order of the day, along with all the trappings of boundless wealth. Another short excursion into the mountains near the coast leads to Cáceres. Sleepy mountain village with around 300 shining white houses with contrasting red rooftops. On a 
nearby hill are the ruins of a Moorish castle that dominates the picturesque mountain village. It's a striking sight. Surrounded by houses, the small square with its well and church is in the centre of the village. Village life continues tranquilly and peacefully. Small shops offer a variety of mouth-watering products of this region, such as ham and paprika. In addition to some of its other constructions, the centre of the village with its Plaza de España and Baroque Iglesia de la Uca Nación are protected buildings. The steep climb to the ruins of the Arabian castle is something of a challenge. In Moorish times, the white village situated high up in the rocky terrain of the Sierra Bermeja was well protected by its natural surroundings. The foundation walls of a later fortified church look like the remains of an ancient castle. Hostile times have left their mark. From here, there's a glorious view across the green, hilly landscape. Along the southern coast are several newly built yachting harbours, such as Soto Grande. To cope with demand, the region's modern harbour facilities were built in record time. And there's usually an endless stream of those wishing to use the harbour's extensive facilities. Many fine residential areas and a first-class golf course are located close to the harbour. Further south, and located high above Algecira Bay, the village of San Roque is well worth a visit. The inhabitants of Gibraltar settled here at the beginning of the 18th century, following the acquisition of the rock by the English. square and houses with heraldic figures on their facades are reminiscent of bygone times. Next, there's the rock of Gibraltar and the ships that travel through the straits. What secrets do these buildings hold? Tales of history and high drama? The journey through fiery southern Spain ends here. Dreamy harbour towns, cultural metropolises with a Moorish past, Christian buildings and white villages, beauty in the Garden of Eden, Andalusia.